When I was 12 years old, I was sent to Limpopo, and that's where all my problems start when I was in school. I would hear some voices, and I thought maybe there are people in the room that are, you know, whispering somewhere and started to look around and there was nobody. It started from hearing voices. Now I started to have this, you know, should I say, evil power coming at night. It will just enter in my room, take out my voice, my strength, I couldn't scream. The more I try to fight, it's like I don't have strength or power. No one in the room could hear me. And it will beat me up like that the whole night until 4 a.m. and left me in the morning with bruises. But the teachers started to notice the bruises on my face, on my body, and asked me what's going on. And I would tell them the same thing. There's something that is coming at night. Until now, it get worse to an extent that now, during the day, even when I was in the class, I will have this woman coming to me and talking to me and say, just take my hands and go with me. If you can just take my hands and go with me. And I will speak to her back, like replying what she's saying. And people around me will notice and say, who are you talking to? What's happening? And when I would point where this lady is, they will see nothing. And she will continue to laugh at me and says, no one can see me and no one will see me. Only you will. And if you want me to stop embarrassing you, just take my hands and go with me. They called me about Mpo. I went home. That's where she started to tell me about that lady who's worrying her so much. The first night I remember that I was with my parents, they said, which time is this woman comes? And I said, she pops out anytime she wants, anytime she likes. Maybe today she might not come because I'm in a different location. I'm in a different place. And then my father and my mother keep saying, no, we want to see and immediately when she appears, let us know. But the following day, if I remember correctly, that my mom came for lunch to give me food and she just appeared right in front. She says, so you eating alone? You forgot about me. And immediately I told my mom, she's here. She's speaking with, with her that if you tell my mommy who I am, that's where you're going to, you see me how, what I'm going to do to you. But the following morning when I woke up, I couldn't see. And I remember, you know, calling her, mom, mom, I can't see. And she was thinking I'm joking. No, 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 what do you mean you don't see? You don't see my hand, nothing. We thought, okay, maybe next week she will be okay. Okay, next week I'll be fine. But that was just a starting point. That's how I lost my sight. I couldn't see at all. And of course, as parents, they started now to look for help. And they started taking me to one place to another. We knocked in many doors. I mean, spiritual healers. We went to prophets. We, we went to different churches. Wherever they will say, there's a help there. There's a help in that door, we'll go. And in all these places that we would be referred to go to was not for free. I mean, I literally saw my mother and my father empty themselves. I spent a lot of money. Whatever they ask, I would give them. Paul's father, he asked me if we can sell the business. My father had to sell the house that we had in Rebbe Ridge, in Bremley and also sell the only surviving, survival uh, business that we had. That was the end of everything we've, get, we've got. We were like broke, having nothing. One day, my mother was invited by her friend to Universal Church. I was not interested because it was not the first church that we went to. I believe she went for a period of a month. She learned how to use her faith. She was listening to testimonies of people in the church, more or less than what she was already going through. And the opportunity came of the campaign and she said, I am throwing myself in it. And this time I am going to give to the right altar. She did not buy the things that she used to and took everything and put in the envelope, building her sacrifice. But the day that she was supposed to fulfill her vow 
of a sacrifice on the altar. She says to me, today you're going to, with me to the church. And I said, I'm not going. I'm sorry. And she says, Mpo, you going with me. We have done it all. We, at this point, we have nothing to lose. We sat down, we attended the service in the morning of 10 o'clock where she fulfilled a vow on the altar. And she says to me, we're going to wait for the next service. And I'm like, no. I was already saying, no, no, no. We have to go now. No, we have to wait for this service of one o'clock. It's a strong prayer. This is the right service to fight these demons that are, have been tormenting you. The service started and the bishop who was there that time, he started the service with something and I was sitting down. He says, if this God does not give you what you want, then he's not my God. So when he says, close your eyes, let's start to pray during the strong prayer. I remember the only thing that I said in that prayer is God. If his God is God as he's saying, I'm not asking too much from you. And that was it. What happened after that, I don't remember. I just remember after that an assistant brought me back to the, chair, to the chair where I was sitting with my mother. And I asked my mother what's happening. And she says to me, I'll explain when we get home. While they were singing, I just had just strong, sharp, like lightning striking across my head. When I opened, I saw this strong, strong light in my eyes. And I was like, what's happening? What's happening here? And when I started to open my eyes, look around, I see many, but like multitude of people singing, dancing. And I'm like, where am I? What's happening? I was sitting down. My mother, she was by my side singing. And then I pulled her with the skirt and she says, please wait. I said, I will explain when we get home. And I said to her, no, mom, I just want to ask if you're wearing a white blouse. She was wearing a white blouse with a black skirt. And she says, I said, oh, just, just stay still. And quickly she says, wait, wait, can you see? Did you say, did you ask me I'm wearing a white, white blouse? And he says, yes, mom, I can see. And she was already shouting. He says, mommy, I can see you. I can see you, your white shirt and your skirt. You can see, you are screaming. I scream, I was so happy. Before I can even say, I don't see well. And she was already saying, thank God my daughter can see. An assistant came and says, mom, what's going on? She can see. When I came with her, she didn't see. And the assistant took me to the altar and Bishop was asking me, can you see mom? Your, your daughter could not see, no Bishop, she could not see. Can you see me now? I said, yes. How many fingers am I raising? And I told him three. That's where I, I thought, eh? here there is the proper things that is making when they promise things there it is it's happening and i remember he said look at me look at me before this week finish you're going to see completely completely well and i said amen and before we can even reach home when we left the church i could see perfectly well when i arrived at home and my father asked and then how is this church what happened what do they want this time? And I said, actually, they checked. He was wearing a striped checked shirt, maroon, green, blue. And I said, your shirt, the check shirt you're wearing is beautiful. And he was like, what is it? How do you know? And my mother said, she can see. She even manifested this is what happened. And Bishop says, from now on, she's free. She will never have this problem ever again. And that night, my father was like, is it true? Yes. Let's see tonight what's going to happen then. And that was the first night that I slept peacefully. That woman never came back again. That evil spirit that were beating me up every night never came back again. So I was totally free. And I said, from here, I had to go back to the church. So in the universal church, yeah, they teach us to make the right sacrifice. We put many sacrifices in wrong altars, but when we put the, the right sacrifice on the right altar, through the Holy Spirit, we conquered all. When we now surrendered everything on the right, right altar, the Holy Spirit really gave us victory.
my advice is come to give on the right altar. When my mother decided to make a vow with God and sacrifice and put it on the altar, that's where God transformed my life. Come to put your problem in the right altar. And it's only through the Holy Spirit you can be able to overcome whatever situation that you are going through. Only with the Holy Spirit. Today, I am saving God on the altar, helping other people that they are currently going through what I went through and teaching them the right way to put their life on the right altar for God to set them free as he did with me as well and my family. So thank you, Jesus.